Hello friends from Kishinev in Moldova and today I decided to visit and to take you along with, with me to visit some pensioners some retired people who were once very important have you ever thought what happens to Lenin, Stalin, Marx, Engels Trotsky and other people like them when they go and when they get retired you see there behind those trees is city of Kishinev capital of Mo Moldova and this is the outskirts of the town and here is a big pond where people learn to um, learn to use kayaks and canoes and if I am correct, we will see and find out in a minute. Behind this pond, away from people, through this small path, behind a rotten dead rat, I don't know if you can see it, there is a small path between the trees which I hope, we will see, it may, I might be wrong, I haven't been there yet <laughs> but which I hope will get us to a place where Lenin is resting from his works judge yourself, evil works or good works but he is definitely resting there and we will see if we can get an audience to meet him it might be quite interesting and as far as I understand we need to follow this path and in a moment we'll find out According to Google Maps, if I'm correct, they should be somewhere behind this corner. But we'll see in a moment. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I think I already see something which reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Here you are. Here you are, Jaja. <laughs> what do you think about this, guys? <laughs> All three of them. Well, I thought maybe there will be more, but we got three of them. <laughs> Well, yeah, and it's in Moldovan, uh, written with Kyrillic letters, as, as they did during Soviet times when this was part of Soviet Union. Now they write in Latin, like Romanians. And here is in Russian, Doska Pachota, which is Board of Honor, the people who should be put on their pictures probably were put on this board to show everybody how good workers they are in Soviet society and how well they are fulfilling the five-year plans of Communist Party and this guy I doubt if there is anybody who wouldn't recognize this guy well for those who wouldn't, you can see it's written in, in Russian, Lenin. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. I think he is 
about as much recognized as Adolf Hitler and about as nice person and about as successful as Hitler probably <laughs> depends how we judge and this guy he's a German but he was more honored by Russian speaking Soviet citizens and Soviet Union than by any Germans Karl Marx and that one I'm pretty sure he's Friedrich Engels a good friend of Karl Marx who helped him to produce all these seeds which later produce communism and things like that and here is even a bench where you can sit and admire these people who are now retired in their pension <laughs> what do you think? have you ever thought how is it in Soviet Union during Soviet times every city and every town had its central square or intersection of streets where they definitely must had statue of Lenin and often Marx and often all Stalin and all the other big minds who created that system which is called which was called Soviet Union and every small town had statue of Lenin countless statues and have you ever thought where did where did they go after Soviet Union collapsed in the end of 80s uh, beginning of 90s when all the people who were so happy so immensely happy to get rid of Soviet rule and Communist Party and Leninism and Stalinism ideology and all that of course they wanted to get rid of all the street names the street of Lenin and Marx street and Stalin and whoever not well, Stalin wasn't that popular in the street names actually but many other all kinds of them and and of course people wanted to 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 get rid of that as quickly as possible and and rename the streets back to their historic names and uh, of course they wanted to take away the statue of lenin so that we would never ever again see it and have you ever thought where do they go i haven't when it happened in Latvia, where I was living by that time when Soviet Union collapsed, I was so happy, together with everybody else, to see that Lenin taken by a big crane and put into huge lorry kamaz, uh, what do you call, the, the trailer, which almost broke because of the, how huge that Lenin was, and, and just taken away, taken away of our eyes so that we would never ever see him again. We were just so happy to see him take it, being taken away. And I never thought where they go <laughs> after that. And uh, to be honest, I still don't know. But this is, I think, one way how they have done it here in Moldova. They have got rid of these guys in the center of the city there behind that forest is that um, path with this dead rat behind that is the pond and further away is the city of Kishinev well it's probably this is part of Kishinev technically but the center is quite far there and they have moved these guys here let them stand here where nobody will really see them unless they want to come and visit them like I wanted because at the same time it is history and once it is not threatening us anymore it is kind of nice to have that history and to show to your kids oh this is how it was and uh, by the way these busts and uh, statues they are works of art as well 
Yes, may you may not agree with that style, maybe, that was that Len uh, socialist, communist kind of era style, how they were depicting people. But still, they are, uh, they are pieces of art, and they are memories and uh, testimonies of that time. And it's nice that they have kept it. Like now, when Leninism and Communist Party doesn't threaten me and my life anymore, I don't feel intimidated anymore by sitting and looking on these guys and telling you about them. Now, it's nice to have a look <laughs> how they look when they are retired. I wonder why they don't have any Stalin here. Liebe Comrade Karl Marx und Friedrich Engels, where is Stalin? Mr. Vladimir Ilyich, where did they put Stalin? Oh, you don't speak in English. Tavarish Ilyich, где вы дели Сталина? Или куда, как правильнее сказать? <laughs> Could it be that they didn't have statue of Stalin here? Can't be. Or maybe the Stalin, they were too angry with him and they grinded him into powder. <laughs> but these guys, they left because probably Stalin was more threatening and intimidating. Because if Karl Marx, this guy, and Friedrich Engels, that guy on the far end, if they were the ones who thought up all these crazy ideas about communism and socialism, and if we compare it to nature, they were the ones who made, produced these seeds of communism. But they didn't get further than producing the seeds. Then this guy in the center was one of the most successful planter of those seeds who put those seeds into very fertile so soil of Tsarist Russia in the beginning of 20th century, which was desperate and dissatisfied with everything, and even more dissatisfied after the First World War, which was something crazy and completely unnecessary for Russians. So this guy, Lenin, he planted these seeds of communism into very fertile Russian soil in the beginning of 20th century. And then Stalin was the guy during whose time those seeds did not only grow into trees, but they started to produce their nasty poisonous fruit. During the Stalin, exactly Stalin, not Lenin, during, Sta during Stalin, it happened when all those countless millions of people were killed, tortured in KGB basements, in, uh, sent into gulags in Siberia, far east, far, far north, and, and worked to death in the cold without much food. It was exactly during Stalin. And maybe, I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe that's why there was more hatred towards Stalin that they didn't keep him here, but those first beginners of this crazy thing called communism, they were left standing here. I don't know. This is actually quite interesting and funny, how such idea as socialism and communism can live, survive, well, how it can be thought up, it's quite clear. We, we people think up all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> but, but how can this idea get popularity and survive and get in, uh, impersonated into a huge country which lived for 70 years, Soviet Union? 
how that's possible. This is something unobtainable for human mind. <laughs> how it's possible. Like, if you think a little bit, even about socialism, let alone communism, it's very quickly, if you think a little bit, if you use your brain very little bit, it's quite clear very fast that this system can't work. <laughs> it and, and now history has shown that after countless, uh, uh, countless attempts that it doesn't work and it never has worked <laughs> and it never will obviously because of course that if you give people more freedom and if you give people possibility to have their property and enjoy the fruits of their work which means less taxes, less regulations, more freedom. It will, at the end, mean that, in general, people will be freer, more motivated, because they can keep what they produce, they can enjoy the fruits of their labor. There's a nice squirrel. I don't think you will see it. Maybe. And people will live better. Not everybody, of course, but society in general. The more freedom you give, the better they will live. And the opposite true is, is true as well. If you take away their freedoms, and any kind of communism always ends up taking away people's freedoms. Can't have any other way. And that's why I said in one of the previous videos, it always ends up in alcoholism as well. Because those people whose freedoms were taken away, how can they live? How can they look into their life? And how can they look in their own eyes in their mirror? Only with big amounts of vodka. Otherwise it's impossible. So, if you take away freedom, if you take away the fruit of people's labor in taxes, in heavy taxing, if you introduce a lot of heavy regulations, of course, the result will be that society uh, in general will be more poorer and will be more disillusioned and depressed. So these guys worked hard to prove this to us. The only sad thing is that it took 70 years of torture, humiliation, impoverishment, 70 such years under the name of USSR Union of Soviet Socialistic Republics this, this took 70 years of human torture and, and misery to prove that these ideas which were thought by these guys and fought into reality by these guys that these ideas can never work and by the way if you want more l l let's say if somebody might say that that uh, the Soviet Union is, in is, is a special case and you can't compare it with the United States and blah 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 uh, like it's pretty obvious that the United States where there was more freedom at least by that time uh, so uh, United States and Soviet Union was was kind of equal players in their fight of Cold War and this and the United States came out to be strong and winning and world leader and Soviet Union came out to completely rot from inside and collapse into small pieces of misery and, and somebody could say, yeah, it's, it, th these are different countries, different mentalities, different histories, you, ca you can't compare it. Well, if you don't believe me, then I can suggest you check about Korea. There you can see Korean Peninsula and Korean people, both in North Korea and South Korea, they are exactly the same, well, they were <laughs> exactly the same people, same tradition, same mentality, same culture, same food, same uh, intellectual level, uh, same motivational level, 
same history, same everything. The only difference which made the border between North Korea and South Korea was the ideology. South Korea was the ideology of the free world, freedom and possibility to earn and keep what you earn. And North Korea was the ide ideology of communism. And now, after so many years, who needs more arguments or more, um, what do you call it, persuasion to see the difference? Look at South Korea now and look at North Korea now. Where are they? How people live, how happy they are, how wealthy they are. Do you need any more words? That explains. Take away freedom from people, take away from their income through taxes, and you'll get to misery. Let people live freely, produce and earn, and make their lives better, and you will see that people are living better and better. It's simple as that. But it's funny how long and difficult it was to prove that it took 70 years of communist rule in Soviet Union to prove this. And still, not everybody can see it still. There are so many people, even in Western world, who think that socialism is something that there is something good in it, <laughs> that, that there is something wi which which could which could we we could give it a go and see how it works. Come on, people, just use your brain. It's like working against nature. <laughs> how can it work? Like uh, you can read George Orwell about how these things work. You can't cancel gravity. Things still fall down, not up. And you can make a communist party order which says that from today things will fall up, not down. But things still fall down. That's the nature. You can't go against it. You can imprison everybody who admits that things fall down. Yes, you can do it. You can um, scare everybody to never talk about the fact that things fall down. You can get uh, into a court people to testify that they have seen uh, they have seen yesterday that things fell up, not down. You can do all these things, and all the communist countries have done these things a lot. But that doesn't change the nature that things <laughs> does fall down. <laughs> if you take away freedom from people, if you take away fruit of their labor and give it to somebody else, the result will be poverty, apathy, depression. And if you let people live freely, work and keep that they have earned, it will result in pros prosperity and people who will be more happy. Well, well, they will never be completely happy. <laughs> they are people. <laughs> but they will have a lot more in their lives to be happy for instead of these totalitarian, communistic, or even socialistic regimes. Okay, that was a long talk. <laughs> I just started to think and rumble by seeing these faces which I haven't seen for such so long time. But one thing is nice. Standing here, seeing these faces, I don't feel intimidated anymore. I don't feel threatened anymore. This is just history. Painful, terrible, but just history. So guys, all three of you, you have done your job, you have proved to all the world which you could prove, which you could prove, and you have been doing 
decades long work of standing in the city square intimidating people now you can finally rest here in your retirement where nobody really looks at you where nobody really cares what you did because luckily this is only history and thankfully thank god doesn't seem like something like this could ever repeat i hope